Welcome to Roll to Hit Gaming Monthly. Today, we'll take a look back at October 2017. Also, BGG Con is coming up in just over a week, and there's a lot of games that we're looking forward to. And of course, we have our monthly update on our Shelf of Shame project, where we're trying to play all our unplayed games off the shelf in one calendar year. It wasn't the best month, but it wasn't the worst. <laughs> For Roll to Hit Gaming, I'm Chip. I'm Joe. And I'm Lucas. Looking back at last month, uh, which was a difficult month for us here in the Roll to, Get, Roll to Hit Gaming Studios, uh, I put up two videos on the channel, the first of which was a first look at Century Spice Road, which is a game where you're collecting merchants and using them to gain cubes in order to fill orders and score points. Um, it sounds like a cube pusher, and it is, but it's a fun one, so go check that out. And the other one was a new series that we've begun called The Miniature Report, and in this show, we focus on miniatures in hobby gaming. So we cover board games, war games, anywhere we might find our beloved toy soldiers. So we also have provided at the end of each episode a brief non-pro tip to hopefully help your take your help you take your hobbying to the next level. Well, for our games of the month this month, uh, Lucas, as you said, it was kind of a rough month on the Roll to Hit team uh, with some of us being out. But Jolene, you and I uh, were able to get together one, one Saturday night. And we kind of had a Gale Force 9 uh, uh, play night. Yep. And so I kind of had a tie for my games of the month. Uh, we played Firefly the game, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. But I think you're going to talk yep. some more about that. Uh, we also had a few minutes left after Firefly. So we pulled out uh, the Sons of Anarchy Mom or Men, Men of Mayhem. And we played that a little quick game, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a sort of a worker placement, area control. Um, but we played with three players. Mm -hmm. took us about half an hour. You are basically trying to acquire cash. Cash wins the game. Uh, doing so, you're, you're moving contraband and you're acquiring guns and, and having uh, standoffs with your opponent gang member or your opponent's gangs. Um, I liked it. I mean, I'm not, I, you know, I know nothing about biker culture, but, uh, you know, it was fun. And to me, it seemed thematic. The, the tiles of the game look like beer coasters. Yep. And, you know, I, I think if I was in a motorcycle game and I made a board game, I would probably use beer coasters. So, uh, I enjoyed it. And, uh, I, I totally trounced Johnny, uh, mm -hmm. because he decided to have a gang war with me and uh, we don't call him low dice for no reason. He, uh, I sent eight of his guys to the emergency room, and he rolled and killed them all. So, um, JoLynn was was uh, pretty close to me at the end, but I, I did have the most money at the end, so won. And um, just all around good time. Uh, what did you think, Joe? Uh, I did. I, I did enjoy it. It reminded me a little bit of Carleone's Empire, okay, yeah, but it yeah. was on a much much smaller, much scale, yeah. smaller mm -hmm. scale. Um, the cool thing is, is, is like you you have your starting gang, and then you can buy more prospects mm -hmm. or hire more prospects, and then th you can patch them up mm -hmm. to where they're full fledged gang members. And you're going to these locations in order to either obtain drugs or to uh, trade drugs for guns or guns for cash. And so, if you're the only person at that location, then you can do the action mm -hmm. that's there. Uh, but if someone else also wants to do that same trade, gotta have, beef. Gotta have a game war uh, for that location. So it, it was it was fast paced. It was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, tell us about Firefly. So we went on the Gale Force Nine uh, yes, tribute, we did. And, and this one is the good one. Okay, so we also played Firefly the game. This uh, we also had a couple of expansions in it. Uh, what was it? Cal uh, Blue Sun. Blue Sun. Kalidasa. Kalidasa. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of different ones, and uh, we just had this big, epic, sprawling, uh, basically pick up and deliver. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more to it. You can uh, not only are you delivering goods, but you are misbehaving. Uh, you could decide to gamble. You can go to one of the core planets or one of the rim planets. You can uh, upgrade your ship, upgrade your crew. Mm -hmm. uh, you're dodging the Reavers. You're dodging the Alliance. There's just so much packed into mm -hmm. this game that it's just, time just flew by. Yeah. It was yeah. just a great deal of fun. I loved it. Uh, I would say that this is my favorite Firefly game that I've ever played. And I've tried the Encounters version and we've mm -hmm. tried other ones. 
this is it. If you like Firefly, then you need to play this game. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And also, um, the you get story cards, right? Yep. So we played just the because we had never played before, so we, we just played the the standard mission. Mm-hmm. But the you know the the game comes with a set of different missions that you can try out after after you get into it if you want some kind of variety there. Um, the one thing that I worried about when we first got the game was it's um, the way that you move in the game. You either you either mosey one mm-hmm. space with relatively no danger, or you can do a full burn where you, you get to move as many spaces as your ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, your ship's drive core will tell you how many spaces you up to that many you can move. And if you choose to do that, for every space that you move, you have to pull a card from a deck, depending on what area of the board you're in, which space, the Alliance space or the Rim space mm-hmm. or uh, what is it called? Reaver? Is it Reaver? Not Reaver space, but the outer fringe, rims, the outer the rim, fringe. rim, yep. I think. Um, you have to pull mm-hmm. from that deck each space, right? And so I was so worried that, you know, man, that's going to like just trash you as you go. But it really doesn't. No. Half of those decks are just keep flying. And then the other half is, you know, I would say half of those are negative, but then the other half could be even positive. You might pick up some cargo or, or some uh, some civilians that want to mm-hmm. ride, you know, or think, find a guy that'll sell you some parts or some fuel at a cheaper cost, things like that. So it, it really, the way they did mitigation in that really worked well mm-hmm. for me. And, yeah, and it did. so I really uh, found out that it wasn't. I had I had I didn't need to worry about that so much. It was it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to play. And even with those uh, space encounter cards, or even if you decide to misbehave, um, it's kind of a choose your own adventure type thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're given a choice when you pull that card, and and it could be you know based on the amount of tech that you have in your crew you can roll for this and this is the outcome. Or if you want to shoot your way out, then you could roll your fight uh, and you choose which direction you want to go and then the result goes from there. So I really like that piece of it too. You're not pulling a card and then, oh, well, I don't have the stuff for it, so I'm just stuck with this bad thing. I mean, you can... You can choose your adventure, choose the path you want to go. There was one where I was agonizing choice mm-hmm. on whether or not it was a 50-50 shot on this particular card. It was a ga- it was basically a gamble. Uh, and if I completed that misbehaving, then I got $4,000 mm-hmm. um, in credits. If I failed it, then I'm starting all over. Right, and right. so it was just, it literally, it took me two or three minutes to finally just close my eyes and roll the <laughs> dice. I got the four grand. <laughs> yeah, you got extremely lucky. I got that, extremely so. lucky on that. So I, I love this game. This yeah. is a fantastic one. Good game all around. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucas, I know that you're not the biggest fan of Firefly, but I, I do think you would enjoy the game. Mm, we'll see. Um, I spent about half of last month on business travel, um, and in the evenings was sequestered in a hotel room by myself. <laughs> but I did take along a game that I could play solo, um, and I've been working my way through uh, Uwe Rosenberg's games that I haven't played uh, because I've, I've determined I'm a big fan. So I took along Le Havre, and I, I really enjoyed playing it solo. Um, it's, it's a collect resources, build buildings, and put your resources through those buildings to make them better and score points off of your buildings in a couple other ways. Uh, that's the, the basic gist of the game. Um, and I really enjoy that, that, you know, that collect, convert, and, and score uh, idea in a Euro game. But from a solo perspective, I, I suppose it's, there's 12 different resources, and there's chits for each one of them, and then there's various other pieces. And I think I spent longer learning how to play it and setting it up than I did playing it. It's a lot to put on the table for one person mm-hmm. to play. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, you know, there's no, there's no player interaction, obviously. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think it would be better with that player interaction because, you know, they're going to buy buildings that you wanted, forcing you to adapt your plan, you know. And then there's a cost to go to a building that you don't own, you know, and you're just paying that cost to the town if you're playing in a solo game, uh, whereas you'd be paying that cost and receiving that cost for an attractive building that you built from other players coming to it and visiting it in a multiplayer game. So I think I'm really going to a- enjoy it uh, from that perspective um, but as a solo game, 
it was still fun. There was just no challenge, and it's a lot mm -hmm. of setup. So mm -hmm. mine was Lahab. In the solo game, is there a, <clears throat> is there a point goal, or are you just trying to beat your? No, own it's score? it's it's one of those deals where you're trying to you know beat the score that you had this time. Right? Yeah, and I think okay. I scored 150 something points. So I, I suppose you write that down, and then the next time you try to do better than that. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, I didn't really know whether that was a good score or not when I was done. <laughs> you know. Um, well, I've seen this game. I'm interested to play it. Um, mm -hmm. Be be interested and see what a three player. Turns yeah, me too. Us. Me too. Mm -hmm. Well, those are our games of the month. Well, two months left, and we are still on this shelf of shame process. Um, <laughs> As we reported last month, we have crossed our major milestone of having played 119 games, which was our January 1st total on the shelf of shame. But, mm -hmm. of course, the addicts that we are, we've added quite a few <laughs> along the way. Uh, our current numbers for this month, I'll just say it was flat. We got, we, it was a push. Yep. Four in, four out. Yep. Uh, you know, that's a victory for us in some situations. <laughs> Uh, but our total numbers for the month of November are 126 games played, that 126 unique games played, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 62 to go on the shelf. So um, I don't know that we're going to make it by the end of the year, especially yeah. with BGG Con next week, but yeah. uh, I think we've made tremendous progress. Uh, talk about the four that we did play. Uh, I mentioned Sons of Anarchy had a good time with that. Uh, and then we played uh, Euphoria, Build a Better Dystopia. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I was kind of jazzed to play this one because I'd heard so much about it. Uh, but um, to be quite honest, it just kind of fell flat for me. It wasn't a bad game, and, mm -hmm. and God knows I, I love Jamie Stegmeier. Yeah. Um, but uh, this one to me, and maybe that was my problem too, right? I, I was introduced to Jamie Stegmeier by, you know, his later titles. So. Right. This one, to me, felt like sort of a sophomoric effort, but it was when he was young, a younger designer, right? I could see elements that he, that he took from uh, Euphoria into other games, that's mm -hmm. for sure. But he certainly refined, in my opinion, I mean, you know, we know and we know all about opinions. Everybody's got one. Um, but uh, to me, he definitely refined his mechanics that he sort of started there in his later later offerings and mm -hmm. and now Stegmeier is one of my top designers I just mm -hmm. I love his games but Euphoria it just kind of felt like I said a little bit sophomoric to me what do you guys think I, I would agree that it fell a little flat with me um, I, I was expecting it to be a little more than it was and I think one of the things that we did that maybe other folks don't do we didn't really focus on the building of the markets in the, yeah. in the center of the board mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know we went around doing the other things um, and we finally did build one of those and were shocked at the effect that it had on the mm -hmm. game the global effect yeah, yeah. yeah. you know I mean it, you know, only two of the five people got in on the building of it and, uh, you know, as you work up the different factions and influence, <laughs> they provide some kind of benefit um, bonuses to the mm -hmm. different spaces that you yeah. go to. And the one that we built, for anybody who didn't participate in the construction of that market, those bonuses were gone. Yeah, and, yeah. it crippled me. And, uh, you know, maybe we should have looked at that before we played, but, I mean, the energy level of the game, as soon as that tile was flipped, went... And we understood yeah. what it yeah. meant. You know, and yeah. it just... Mm -hmm. um, that that flipping that one tile and it having that one effect um, was just a huge uh, drain of energy on the game, right? It was, you know, then it was just. I think the general attitude of, of some at the table was, "Can we just get this over with?" Mm -hmm. You know, because um, it just sapped the fun out of it. So that was a little disappointing. Um, and you know, not every game can be a hit. You know, yeah. Uh, Mr. Stegmeier's made two of the. Two of my favorite games of all time, you know, not every one of them is going to be great. Mm -hmm. This game might be for somebody, just I don't think it's for us. Yeah. Uh, I guess I figured that when I went into it, especially with the title, you know, I thought it would mm. be more political in nature. Mm. Uh, and it was more of the, I don't know, manufacturing. Yeah, it's kind of worker placement engine building. And it did. But, I mean, I, just, I guess I, I figured that politics would yeah. be... 
mm-hmm. integrated into it more. And so that's the mindset that I went into yeah. it. And so it, it wasn't a bad, like I said, it wasn't a bad game. No, it, wasn't. No. Um, it was, um, it was very entertaining. We, like I said, with those buildings, they were very powerful mm-hmm. and there wasn't yeah. a way to counter that. Um, yeah, should I ever play it. again, I will definitely get in on be building jumping. those buildings. Yeah, yeah. get on the buildings. I'll never let one of those fall by the wayside. Yeah, and uh, our other one that we haven't already talked about this month was a game that I, I think Chip got in a uh, <laughs> Secret, Santa. Secret Santa type deal, right? And and at least my experience in seeing what he brought over was he got a box of just stuff. <laughs> um, we'll use that word. Um, but one of the games in there was called Snail's Pace Race. Um, and one of the uh, one of the things that we do in, a, in our free time volunteering is uh, we, we are leaders for a local Cub Scout unit. Yep. And we needed a game to take and play with the first graders. Um, and we wanted to tie it in loosely with food because they were learning nutrition. about nutrition, right? <laughs> Well, this is the closest we got, and we were like, let's see what this is, right? Because, the, you know, we said that the snails were eating the leaves that you uh, you roll along the way, right? Their food is at the end, which is the, the like, I don't know if they're leaves, but they kind it's of look leaves. like leaves. So <laughs> they're first graders. We sold it. Um, but anyways, there are, there are six different colored snails. They're and the huge. board and the, Yeah, they're huge. This game, I think... First grade is going to be your limit because they're going to age out of it first mm-hmm. and probably down to maybe three, you know, could really <laughs> enjoy this game. Uh, but there's six race lanes with your six different colored snails, and there are two <laughs> six-sided dice with just a different color on each mm-hmm. side. You roll those dice, whichever two colors you roll, those two snails move forward one space. If you roll the same color, then that snail shoots forward two spaces. <laughs> the idea in the rule book is that the kids are supposed to you know, uh, I, th- I think the I think the orange one's going to win. Right. I think the blue one's going to win, and then root that on. And that's not what happened. <laughs> they decided they were the orange one. <laughs> oh, okay. they were the blue one, and they wanted to win. But that didn't detract from it because you know it's it's a good group of little boys, and they yeah. just had fun rolling dice and moving these giant wooden snails down the track. So essentially, what you're telling me is this game is an early predecessor to Camel Cup. I've never played Camel Cup. I don't know, but I can tell you that if you cared, which they did not because they had a great time with it. I'm recommending this one if you can find it for very little kids. Little I think it's a kids. great game for them. Color matching, all that good stuff. Just have fun. There is 100. This game is 100% random. Of course, I mean, yeah. You know, <laughs> well, so is Camel Cup. I mean, Maybe, right? Yeah, I've never played yeah. it, but I mean, you know, that was the amazing thing. You know, it's just absolutely one. But the cool thing is each lane is like five... Uh, five spaces, right? And we just handed one boy the dice here. You roll them, mm-hmm. you move. The next boy takes the dice, you roll them, you move it, and it just boom, 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 right? So it's over real quick. We had like five or six yeah, races. You know, and yeah, they raced it over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of first graders rolling dice and cheering on their snails. Um, it's a good time for young kids. Yeah, I, I really yeah, think so. Sounds great. And what was really funny is one of the uh, Tiger Dads, uh, he was watching them play, and he's like, the lesson that we've learned today is don't bet on horses. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, so those are the ones we've played off our shelf of shame. And uh, while we've been talking, you've been seeing what we've been adding by the miracle of of editing. So thank you, Lucas, for that. Uh, That is our shelf of shame update for the month of November. Well, for this month's discussion topic, well, I thought since we're less than two weeks out from BGGCon, mm-hmm. I thought we'd talk about games that we really want to play at Board Game Geek. And then we got to think, well, you know what? Essen had the, the announcements coming out of Essen have been so chaotic that I'm not even sure what's going to be at BGGCon. So uh, I think we did our best to put this list together. Uh, and if they're not at BGGCon, it's going to be a terrible shame. But if they are at BGGCon, these are five games apiece that we definitely want to try out while we're there. Uh, I'll get us started. There's a game coming out by Mayfair. It's card drafting and tile placement called Riverboat. And okay. I just did something about the theme, the the artwork on the on the board. It just does something for me. So uh, I want to try this out. If it's going to be there, uh, I want to give it a shot. So it's going to be Riverboat by Mayfair. Joe, what do you got? Tell us something. 
Uh, well, actually, there's a game that I have been jonesing for for a while. Uh, it's I think it's already out. You could probably get it at, at um, you know, your local gaming store or major market. But it's called Edge of Humanity. Mm. Again, it's a post-apocalyptic, which I absolutely adore that theme. So I'm hoping that I can snag a copy there. Mm. Uh, but basically, you're trying to, uh, you know, survive in a post-apocalyptic world, create your bunker, and, and have, you know... Um, gather in the survivors. So, mm. you know, a great theme, and I can't wait to try this version of it. I've heard a lot of people talking about it. I'm, I'm interested to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually a fan of some of that designers of their games, mm. so I'm interested in it too. What yeah. you got? Well, my first one is going to be, uh, I just talked about this in our Game of the Month section about how I've become a huge Uwe Rosenberg fan. So my first one is going to be News Fjord. Mm. Um, and I don't know much about this other than, obviously, I like the box cover. I've liked all of those box <laughs> covers. Mm -hmm. And I like the name that's on the box cover. Um, so I'm really interested in checking it out. From what I can gather, it's some kind of you know fishing deal, right? A fishing village or something like that. So uh, honestly, just about anything other than you know maybe patchwork that has his name on it, <laughs> I'm going to go for. So one. I'm looking forward to trying News Fjord. First of all, Patchwork is an excellent game. <laughs> Secondly, I just like saying Nusfjord. Yeah, well, you know. So it's got to be a great game. <laughs> Since you had to say that it was an excellent game, I, I, allow me to retort. Um, <laughs> it's fun, but it feels like somebody was like, hey, you promised us a game. And he was like, I got this piece going into another game here. Let's just rethink this. There, there you go. Use this one little piece because that shows up again in, in uh, Peace for Odin, I think. Peace for Odin. Um, so, yeah, that's what that one feels like to me. There's a dialogue between uh, Ben Affleck and Kevin Smith okay. that uh, kind of touches on this. I'm this sure is you, a family-friendly channel. I'm sure you'll find it in post-editing where it says sometimes you just have to do the yeah the yeah, yeah, yeah. independent film. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not hating on people that like it, but it's essentially an abstract game. Yeah, and it that's is. not for it, me, right? It is. You know, yeah, sure. I, that's okay. But we're not talking about patchwork. We're talking about what we want to play yeah, at BGG. There we go. New Sword, yeah, definitely I want to play that game. <laughs> I don't know uh, that went off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my next one, and, and I am going to get to some older games because I, I purposely did that, uh, added a few of those too, but I get my uh, Cult of the New out first. Um, Stefan Feld, man, or Stefan yeah. Feld. Yeah. I mean, you know, he just, he's he's impressed me all along. So he's got a new one coming out called Merlin. Write it down and, right there. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I'm, we're definitely playing that game. I, I know that that one's going to be. I'm not leaving there without that game. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll definitely have to play it. And, uh, you know, it can't be a Stefan Feld game unless it's got a Rondell, but I'm down for it. So. Yeah. Let's and play it. What's interesting, I was watching Rado video about it last night. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is a roll and move game. Oh, and nice. he just raved about it, right? Nice, so, nice. I mean, I know he's a fanboy, but I kind of am too. Yeah. So, hey, I'm really uh, that's coming out uh, Queen Games, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I believe yeah. So. Merlin, that's going to be my second choice. And I like pretty things, mm -hmm. so I picked uh, Azul. Oh yeah, yeah. you mm -hmm. know that that mosaic tile mm -hmm. placement. Uh, it's a puzzle, so I'm excited to try and crack yes. that one. So yeah, I cracked on Patchwork for being an abstract game. Don't this one is too, yeah. uh -huh. but it's so visually stunning yeah, it's, yes, it is. Uh, that I'm going to definitely have to give it a try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my next one is we've we've talked about for years a game that is uh, in the top ten. I can't remember exactly where it's positioned. Maybe four of the BGG all time games list that we've never played, um, and that's Terra Mystica. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I, you know, I've heard some things I didn't like mm -hmm. uh, from people about it, and that's one of the reasons that I've never played it. Um, but they're putting out a game called Gaia Project, which has been described as uh, Terra Mystica in space. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think if I'm going to jump in, I'm going to play this. The space part, um, and I love fantasy, mm -hmm. uh, but the space part really gets me intrigued. So I've got Gaia Project on my list. This is one I would like to... Uh, try before I buy, and yeah. with the massive library at BGGCon, that's a perfect setting for that sort of thing. So sure. I'd like for us to give that one a go. Yeah, you know, I came to the realization that with Terra Mystica, you got you got the two camps that have mm -hmm. formed, right? The people that hate it, the people that love it. And I just can't listen to either one of them right yeah, now. I, yeah. I want to play that game. Uh, BGGCon is a great place to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get it done. I worry about Gaia Project is... Because it's a sort of a, uh, I don't want to say a sequel, because I don't think it's necessarily a sequel, but it's definitely inspired by. Yeah. And I, I hope that you don't have to have previous experience with Terra Mystica yeah. 
to understand. That's going to be the real test, and, and our group is perfect for that because <laughs> we, we don't, don't have yeah. Uh, yeah. any mm -hmm. experience with Terra Mystica yet. So it'll be interesting to see if they if they uh, created that rule book to yeah, for people who yeah. had no no experience. Like mm -hmm. you say, I don't know if it's a retheming or if mm -hmm. it's an evolution of or or, or what it is. Uh, but if it is either either of those two things, my only hope would be that they tighten the bolts. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Um, so uh, my my last cult of the new one. I'm not quite sure this one's going to be at BGGCon, but I hope it will. It was at, it was on sale at Essen, so. Uh, we'll see, but it's uh, by TMG, and it is Pioneer Days. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I guess we've got a little bit of Pioneer theme coming out this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. another game called Pioneers. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, the description is more about more more akin to the Oregon Trail video game style of you're trying to move your people mm -hmm. uh, along the Oregon Trail and, and um, put together the right Pioneer group and send them out and do things. And, and TMG is really... Um, really hit my sweet spot with games all along. So mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy the games they put out, and this one just looks to be one more in that list. So I want to give that one a try. Pioneer, Pioneer Days by Team G. Um, there's a game that I've, I've always wanted to try, but um, I really can't get my group into it because uh, there are a few documented broken scenarios. And that's betrayal at House on the Hill. Oh, okay, okay. But mm -hmm. they hopefully they fix any of that quirkiness because they've come out with betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah, Let me cut yeah. you off here. Whether they fixed it or not, I'm in because <laughs> this is based on Baldur's Gate, yes, and I burned away dragons. weeks of my life yep. playing that computer mm -hmm. game. So. And I love Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will crank that thing out every once in a while just for you mm -hmm. know uh, remembrance sake. But if they can take. That game, which I've been wanting desperately to play for the longest time, put it in the Baldur's yeah, Gate sure. setting. Yeah, yeah. I am super excited about that. So that's definitely one I'm hoping will be at BGG. Yeah, that's a good that one. Good. I think it will. Yeah. Yeah. My my next one, I think, is probably going to be a crossover with Chip. And it's, if it's not, then I'm going to cry a little foul here. <laughs> but that is Altiplano. Okay. Um, it's... Uh, Maybe the brother or sister of Orleans. I know it's not the same game, but it's based on and it's going to have a similar feel. Same designers. Uh, yeah, same designers. Um, I really like the box cover. It's, I don't know, it's kind of like a llama. It looks it's like a, a llama, llama with kind of like some old yarn blanket or something, <laughs> fabric behind it, you know. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it looks great. Um, I've watched some stuff on it, really interested in it, and I adore the bag building concept. Mm -hmm. So designers, please go crazy with that. I'm a big fan yeah. of that. And I really want to try it for uh, th That's just an automatic play for me. Okay. So I, I didn't okay. include it on my list, but yeah, I, I, that one just caught me right off the bat with the with the cover art. And then I found out from the designers of Orleans the same mechanics as Orleans. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I really like that bag building uh, mechanic, so definitely want to play it. Yeah. I'll definitely give it a try. Orleans is not one of my favorite games, uh, but when I looked at the board and and the different, you know, it's it's not um, where you're building to be able to do mm -hmm. this. There's mm -hmm. actually locations, and you have to do yeah. movement. There's yeah. more to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a very I'll different. I'll definitely game. give that a shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now we'll we'll step back into older games, and then I, I still wanted to stick with the shelf of shame because. I want to try to make a little progress to to stem the bleeding that we're going to do when we, when we hit that uh, merchant room. So uh, I would like, and, and so I had to pick, I said, you know what, let's pick some of the harder titles that we haven't got around to. Uh, well, not necessarily harder titles, but just titles we hadn't got around to, or maybe we were worried about learning it, or things like that. And let's try to find uh, a, a teacher. Because mm -hmm. one of the great mm -hmm. things about BGGCon uh, I don't have a lot of experience with other conven other gaming conventions, mm -hmm. but at BGGCon, you have a huge room with hundreds of tables, and they provide little flags, almost like Poncho's Restaurants, if you guys know what that is, where <laughs> you, you can put up a little flag if you need players. Uh, or you can put up a flag if you need a teacher. teacher. Yeah, I think and that's so pretty common. That is, that's just really, uh, really, really nice thing, right? And so I want to take Forbidden Stars. I want mm -hmm. to put it on the table, okay. get our little need a teacher flag, 
and set it up and have somebody teach us Forbidden Stars. Um, we've, we've got it, um, and we were all excited and jazzed about it, and we, we have never gotten to it off the shelf of shame. And so I think that'd be one of them. And I think having a teacher there is probably going to be make it very easy to get into. So um, that, that's just what I'm looking forward to, is Forbidden <laughs> Stars. War, Warhammer 40K uh, by Fantasy Flight Games, though. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so for my next one... <clears throat> It's called Bunny Kingdoms. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Shameful. <laughs> it's not shameful. Mm -hmm. it, it's cute as all get out. But it it looks like it is uh, almost like area control, mm -hmm. yep. right? And you have these cute little bunnies. And, and uh, if they are on a tower, if they're not, then you get certain things. I don't know the gist of everything about it, but it's got bunnies. Mm -hmm. So I want to try that one. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I almost backed it on Kickstarter. I, I want to try it. Bunnies, bunnies. I think it's something. Ultimately, I think it's something my girls could get into. I think so. so I want to. I want to see. You know what? What type of game it is? How complicated it is? But I think they'd <laughs> like it. So I'll go from that to uh, what I think is going to end up being a fairly heavy euro, and that's Agra. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually just saw this one for the first time last night. Um, and the the board art looks very similar to that of Stone Age, which I like the board mm -hmm. there. So uh, that visually caught my eye. And at the top of the board, there's a segment that's got your little player pieces, and in the different areas uh, of craftsmanship, you're moving up and making, uh, selling your goods directly to the emperor. the emperor or the sheik or the ruler or whatever, um, to gain influence with him to score points based on where you are, and then you know you can take them other places in the city and do that too. Um, I only got a few minutes to to look at it, so I don't know a ton, but. Visually, it caught my eye, and I think it's going to have about the right amount of depth for me. So that's Agra. Oh, yeah. yeah, that does look very interesting, and and part of it too is is uh, at least from what I could tell is that you know say you start off with wood, mm -hmm. right? Well, you're going to eventually progress it into um, yeah better objects. Yeah, so yeah. it'll be it wood to timber to mm -hmm. furniture. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't yeah. know for yeah, sure, but like you know ways you it goes go, all yeah. the way up to more rare and, and the rarer it is, of course, more the emperor wants it. So there's a lot of Euro mm -hmm. in that and it's I think beautiful. So. Yeah, beautiful this one board. caught my eye. I definitely wanted to try it. Uh, for my last one, now here's one. We're going to need the teacher flag again because we've tried <laughs> twice to get this one to the board and just did, to the table. And just haven't been able to do it. That's Mythotopia. <laughs> um, you know, Martin Wallace, I, I want to play this game so bad. And the two times we've attempted it, you just you get in that rule book and then you're like, no, nah, it's just not happening tonight. Uh, I've even watched videos and thought I had it. I thought I kind of had a, <laughs> a good grasp on it. It just didn't happen. So um, I think BGGCon is the place to do it. Let's find a, let's find a teacher. They can... Run us through because ultimately I don't think the rules are all that complicated to it. Mm -hmm. um, it you know it's a it's a area control map card drafting or not card drafting but a deck builder mm -hmm. style okay. game. Um, so I don't think it's all that complicated. I just think you know my brain isn't working around that rule book very well. So okay. um, just find somebody to teach it to us. For my last one, um, <clears throat> I chose Ex Libris. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you know me in any way, I am a book reading fool. So if I'm not playing games or you know doing Cub Scouts or kiddo stuff, um, I got my nose in a book. So uh, them building a game about a library, mm -hmm. I'm just all over it. Uh, I'm not real sure all the details yeah. on the game on that one, but just the theme itself has, yeah. has drugged me in. I'm pretty interested in it. The way I understand it, you're, you're collecting cards that have mm -hmm. book titles on them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to, you have to build your library not only in a certain order, but there's also certain genres of books that are more valuable. So you want to collect those genres to gain more points, but you also have to have them in a acceptable order. To, Ooh, it's a to puzzle. score on it. Yeah, it so it's, a, yeah, it's kind of multi multi-dimensional, right? Yep. So yeah, it looks really good. I, I've been interested in that one for a while. <laughs> um, my last one is isn't so much a game I need to play, but it's one that I hope is there so I can get a closer look of it because what I've seen on YouTube and uh, what I've read just hasn't given me a good feeling, and that is from Simon Richard the Lionheart. Mm -hmm. um, the subject matter 
grabs me, mm -hmm. but I'm not too sure what this is really even at this point. So I'm hoping that CMON at least has a demo copy there yeah. mm -hmm. um, just so that I can see it, maybe get a feel for what it is, Richard the Lionheart. There's some hype around it. I know that. Yeah. I don't know much about but it. But CMON, there's yeah. hype around just about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Was it uh, Gen Con or where they kind of had a bare bones type? Uh, yeah, they had a really... Um, not informative video right. that I found from Gen Con, um, and I just I didn't learn much there. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I, I know that your the players are trying to influence the outcome of the war, and in some cases you may want to make it so that Richard never returns because you're seizing power in his absence or whatever. Mm -hmm. John. Um, which is intriguing. Just how do you pull that off, right? What's the method to get there? You yeah. know, I want to mm -hmm. I want to see. All right. Well, there's uh, 15 or so different games that we want to take a look at at BGG Con. And uh, we we encourage you, you know, if you get the opportunity to come down to Northeast Texas and uh, participate in BGG Con, it is, it is a great, great uh, convention. Uh, we're also going to have press passes. So a uh, big announcement, we will be doing interviews with publishers uh, on Wednesday, and we will try to get those videos. Uh, they're not going to be super clean edited, um, but... <laughs> We want to get them out as fast as possible to you guys to see what those uh, publishers are, are showing off at BGG Con. So we're going to try to do that overnight while we're while we're there and while mm -hmm. we're talking to them. So uh, there there you have it, and we will report back after the con. And now the time you've all been waiting for. It's time for the bad board game description challenge. This is not a this is not a description of a bad board game per se, <laughs> but it is a description. It's very late while we're recording this, y'all. Uh, it is a description of it is a bad description of go. a board game. Hey, That's got it. it. Yes. Got it. We're not even going to edit that. We'll do it yep. live. Uh, <laughs> the contest goes if you if you know what I'm talking about, which who does. Uh, <laughs> okay. Go ahead and give us a comment down below, and uh, if you're the first correct answer and you have a BGG account, just uh, give me your BGG user ID, and I will send over 100 crispy geek gold your way. So, uh, for the month of October, the, the Bad Board Game Description Challenge. This is a game for eight friends who like screaming at each other while playing deduction games. Just remember what Russian Sean Connery said. Things down here don't react well to bullets. <clears throat> so if you know the answer to that, give us a comment down below. You know what game I'm talking about. And if you're the first correct answer, I'll send 100 geek gold your way. That's going to wrap it up for the month of October. Like I said, we'll report back after BGG Con. For Roll to Hit Gaming, I'm Chip. I'm Joe. I'm Lucas. <laughs>